Let's talk a little bit now about the other key aspect of the PIX, the built-in locket box. Ultra low drift, 0.2 ppm accuracy, one frame drift over 48 hours. Pretty good. Even when you power this, power down the PIX and remove all power, it's got a built-in internal battery that keeps accurate counting for up to four hours. So through lunch, you shouldn't need to rejam anything. Or this will maintain accuracy. The built-in locket box allows us to act as a, as a high accuracy time code generator and very accurate gen lock for feeding to cameras to maintain lock between cameras in a multi-camera shoot. It's also a reader, and we can read external time code from uh, a LIMO input or from BNC, so that's standard LTC time code. Or we can read time code over the SDI, as I mentioned earlier, or HDMI, although HDMI is only supported by low-end Sony cameras. Our GenLock output is on this connector just here, sync out it's called. And that can be set to be either a word clock out or a tri-level output at varying rates depending on what frame size you're or, and frame rate you're working at. Or it can set to be PAL, standard PAL or NTSC. So here you can see the menu structure of the PICs. There's the generator mode, which is free run, 24 hour run, or record run. And then there's external timecode modes. So if you want to pick up the external timecode coming from an external source or the timecode from the camera via SDI HDMI, you'd set to the bottom setting there, ex external TC SDI HDMI. Because we're a generator and a reader, you know, this opens up a whole range of possibilities with such a wide range of cameras. If the camera has no timecode or genlock facilities, it doesn't matter. We just take in that video stream. We can stamp that recording with timecode, even if the camera has no timecode. Mm -hmm. You can see other facilities here. Uh, the sync out, this is where we set our genlock output for feeding to cameras such as Alexa's F3s and RED cameras. And you can see all these different uh, options available from NTSC and PAL all the way through the various tri-level sync generators. This would be used in a, in, typically in a scenario where you're in a multicam shoot and you're running, you want to ensure the cameras are running all at exactly the same rate. So you'd have a PIX mounted to each camera. Because the PIXs themselves are tuned very accurately together, I mean to this 0.2 ppm level of accuracy, we know that one, this PIX on this camera and the PIX on that camera are running at dead on the same rate. We can jam the time code between them using our jam menu. Then we can take in the time code output from the PIX and the GenLock output and connect that to each camera. The camera is then going to sync to that GenLock signal. Therefore, both the cameras are running at exactly the same rate with the same time code. There's no specific setting which says this is master or slave. You just you set it up accordingly to be a master by making this run in free run mode and turning on the sync out signal. Okay, That signal then coming back from the camera being recorded in here is exactly at the same rate that we're outputting. Okay, So everything's phase locked. And that's the main purpose of having a sync out port there. We can also feed that sync out signal to uh, an external audio recorder to make sure that that's running at the same rate as well. If you're using a sound devices recorder, you don't need to worry about a hardwire link on, th on that because of the accurate ambient circuitry in a 788 as well and the 7 series recorders.